great to be able to speak to you again today. Uh, the general purpose of my talk today is the importance of establishing a foundation for the success of your fitness program. Uh, specifically, I want to uh, empower you uh, with a set of tools that are going to help you, five tools that are going to help you actually develop that strong foundation that you need to actually reach your goals and see your program through to the end. I want to start off by asking you a question. How many of you here have already started investing money for your future? Yes? Good, good. How many of you here are planning on having a million bucks in the bank when you retire, or would like to have a million bucks in the bank when you retire? Okay, so I don't know the first thing about investing, so if I were to ask you right now, give me some advice on some steps I would need to take to allow myself to have that kind of money in the bank account when I retire. Just tell me right now, what would you recommend? Don't spend your money foolishly. Don't spend my money foolishly, okay. Pay yourself first, start contributing regularly. Pay myself first, okay. Educate yourself. Educate yourself, okay. <clears throat> Any other pieces of advice here? We don't have any financial start planners in the room? Don't wait until you're 35. Start immediately? Yeah. Those are all great answers, guys. I think we would all agree that the most important thing you can do is to establish a plan, a strategy. To sit down with someone who obviously knows what they're talking about probably more than I do uh, to help me put that together. And I find that in fitness, a lot of people don't do that. Uh, they will jump into fitness, they want to have, uh, they want to reach some sort of goal in the future. Uh, maybe it's weight loss, maybe they just want to be consistent with their program, they understand the health benefits, but they don't have a plan, they don't have a strategy, and in the long run they fail. So, like I said, I'm going to give you guys five tools, specific tools that you're going to leave here uh, with today that are going to help you do that. So the first tool, getting right into it, <clears throat> is called uh, the readiness scale. So I just brought in the documents that I use with our clients. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't photocopy enough for you guys, but I can give them to you later. Uh, so the readiness scale, basically what this does is it helps people determine how ready they are to implement the changes that they're going to need to make in their life to actually reach their goals. A lot of people, a lot, sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, you know what, I want to lose 10 pounds. And that's great. They're really excited. But are they re re really ready to change their diet? Are they really ready to commit to exercising three or four times a week? The amount that's necessary to actually see those changes through. Uh, and so basically by going through this readiness scale, you're asked a number of questions which are given points. And if you score low on the scale, it might not be a good time to implement big changes in your life right now. You can initiate a fitness program and establish some patterns in your life, but your expectations should be a lot lower. If you score medium uh, or middle, middle of the range uh, on the scale, um, you can definitely uh, initiate some changes, but there are going to be some struggles. If you score highly on the scale, definitely it's a great time to get going with your fitness goals. The second tool that I want to give you guys to really help you establish a strong foundation for the success of your program is called smart goal setting. How many of you know what a smart goal is? Anyone? Yeah? Come on, we've all heard this term before. Who can tell me what it stands for? Achievable goal. Specific. Specific. Measurable. Yeah. measurable. Yep. Attainable. Exactly. You got it. Specific, measurable, achievable, or attainable, reward-based, and has a time frame. There's a few other versions of that. Specific, I've also heard motivating. I really like that one. Um, <clears throat> achievable, relevant is also a really good one. And trackable could be another one instead of have, having a time frame. This is obviously very important to have goals. And not only do you want to set goals, but you want to set them as specifically as you can. Goals are going to help you really focus your energies uh, on what you need to be doing. So by having that uh, goal in mind that has a time frame, by putting that time frame on it, it's going to give you that motivation that you need to really push for that. A lot of times people will say, oh yeah, I just really want to get fit, that's my goal. Okay, well, so how are we going to go about doing that? But if they say, I want to lose 10 pounds and drop 2 inches from my waist size in the next 2 months, 60 days, and on this day I'm going to weigh myself, and if I reach my goal, I'm going on a cruise with my boyfriend or girlfriend, that's a great goal. That allows us to track it to see if we're actually making progress along the way. <clears throat> so that's the second tool, setting SMART goals. The third tool that I want to give you guys today to help you establish that strong foundation for your program is an exercise that we like to call uh, developing internal motivation. 
So we all know what external motivation is. I mean, all you got to do is think about uh, the drill sergeant who is barking orders at the recruits. Do I have seven minutes? Okay. Oh, right. Just check. Um, the drill sergeant who barks orders at the recruits, and they obviously respond. That's external motivation. Internal motivation is something you need to determine for yourself on the inside. So the way that we do that with clients is we ask them to write on a piece of paper as many pain and pleasure associations that they can. And the pain associations are related to their current situation. So what is it that you really don't like about where you're at right now? Your clothes don't fit, you've got low self-esteem, you have low energy. Um, and then pleasure associations. You know, I'm going to feel great when I reach my goals. I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to be able to play with my kids. I'm going to be able to make that sports team. By going through that process, you really are able to establish what motivates you internally. <clears throat> and this would be our fourth tool. I'm running short on time, so I'll try to get through it quickly. Obstacles and strategies. So obstacles and strategies, basically what this exercise does is when you think back to when you try to attempt a fitness program in the past, which most of us have statistically, 70 people who start their programs don't ever see them to, to the end and reach their goals. So what was it that came along? What were the roadblocks that sidetracked you and knocked, and knocked you off your, your, your focus? We need to think back to those and we need to write them down. Those were the obstacles and this time it's going to be different. We're going to establish a strategy to deal with that obstacle. So instead of just going at it and having that same obstacle come along and knock us off, this time we're going to have a plan and we're going to be ready for it. So that's our fourth tool, determining our obstacles and our strategies. Fifth tool and the last one I'm going to talk about today uh, to help you establish that strong foundation is a fitness wish list. <clears throat> this is a great thing for people to do and to think about. It's one thing to want to lose five pounds off your waistline. Uh, that's a great goal. I mean, you're going to feel better, better about yourself. Your health is going to get better as well. But you can put those five pounds back on a month later. Hopefully you don't. But when you establish a fitness wish list, what you're doing is you're thinking of activities that you might really want to do that you've never done before. So for example, hike the gross grind, you know, bike ride the Grand Canyon, play on a sports team. There's so many different activities that you might want to do. Run a 5K, run a marathon. Uh, by doing those, it all of a sudden gives you tons of motivation in your training because you're not training for an event. And when you actually accomplish that event, you have an achievement that no one can take away from you. And it, it really builds that results momentum and you can carry, carry on with that. So there you guys have it. I'm a little over time. We have five tools for you there that are really specific that help you establish that strong foundation for your fitness program. I hope that you guys are able to take those with you and see success. Thanks.